And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Thursday, May 12th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories uh, for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. On May 13th at 11 a.m., the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, will hold its 2011 commencement ceremony. Among the 37 graduates receiving their diplomas this year, one distinguished guest will receive an honorary doctorate for a lifetime of advocacy and contributions to Native arts and culture. Susan Schoen Harjo, the 2011 IAIA Honorary Doctorate recipient, has built the profile and a panoramic career over various professionals, creative and political platforms. She is a prominent leader in the arts, culture and policy. As a poet, writer, curator and advocate, she has helped Native peoples protect many sacred places and recover more than one million acres of land. Among her many accomplishments and honors include being the first Vine Deloria Jr. Distinguished Indigenous Scholar at the University of Arizona in the year 2008, the first Native women to receive the Montgomery Fellowship from Dartmouth uh, College in 1992, and the first person to be awarded back-to-back -back fellowships as a 2004 School of Advanced Research Scholar and Poetry Fellow. Kaufman and Associates, Inc. has been recognized by two premier industry competitions, the Tele Awards and the Aurora Awards, for videos produced for the National Science Foundation and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. The NSF video, Weaving STEM Education and Culture, supports the federal agencies, tribal colleges, and universities program. The NSF video tells students stories and showcases several unique programs. A professor who connects traditional Ojibwe teaching with plant uh, taxonomy, um, a nutritional science program based around native foods and research conducted for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for students at Southwestern Indian Polytechnic Institute. The W.K. Kellogg Foundation's Bringing Back Smiles video is a profile of mid-level dental providers called dentist therapists who practiced in remote Alaska native villages. The Sakoga and Mole Lake Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Community is hosting the very first uh, Wolf River Tourism Conference and the first Green Tourism Conference by an American Indian tribe, uh, tribal community nationwide on today and tomorrow, May 13th. According to Richard D. Ackley, Jr., organizer of the event, we've partnered with many organizations, including Northwoods Niji Enterprises Community, Inc., Forest County Area Chamber of Commerce, Langley County Area Chamber of Commerce, and Langley County Economic Development Corporation, the Menominee Indian Nation, and the Lac de Flambeau Chippewa, all whom share our philosophy to protect the environment forever. Mo Lake lies near one of the nation's most underdeveloped, pristine, clean, and still rugged rivers and is committed to ensure that all people who come into that area understand the vital importance of protecting and preserving its beautiful environment. In a letter to the Speaker of the Wisconsin Assembly, State Representative Janet Buley, Democrat of Ashland, requested that a public hearing be held on this, in the 74th District on a proposed bill to streamline mining regulations. Quote to Representative Hannah Dell, who has been a key player in drafting this proposal, has publicly stated that changes to Wisconsin's current mining laws were drafted to ease the way for a proposed iron mine in my district, Buley said. My constituents in Iron and Ashland counties will be the primary beneficiaries of increased economic activity related to mining, as well as the ones living with the environmental consequences. I believe it is imperative that they be given the opportunity to both learn about the proposal and voice their concerns through public hearing processes. Buley's district also contains the Red Cliff, Bad River, and Lacouture bands of Lake Superior Ojibwe, who have all staked out various positions on the environment, clean water, and clean rice in opposition to an open pit mine. Special session bill LRB 2036, written by mining companies, proposes to streamline the permitting process to permit an open pit mine supported by the new Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker and Congressman Sean Duffy, both Tea Party Republicans who want the state open for business. 
The Native Arts and Cultures Foundation has appointed Seven Hackinson and Susan Jenkins to its board of directors. Hankinson was born and raised in the rural Kodiak Island community of Old Harbor, Alaska. He holds a bachelor's degree in English from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and a doctorate in anthropology from Harvard University. Since the year 2000, uh, Hankinson has worked to share Native American perspectives with museums and museum practices with Native people as executive director of the nationally acclaimed Alutik Museum, a native cultural center in Kodiak, Alaska, he is also an accomplished artist known for his carvings and photography. Jenkins is executive director of the Cherokee Preservation Foundation in Cherokee, North Carolina. As the first employee, she provided leadership for the startup phase, hired staff, and developed the grant-making strategy and infrastructure. The foundation recently completed another grant cycle that brings the total number of grants to over over 600 that they've been uh, given out with an investment of nearly uh, $51 million over a nine-year period. Incorporated in the year 2007, the Native Arts and Culture Foundation is a permanently endowed national organization dedicated exclusively to the revitalization, appreciation, and perpetration of Native Arts and Cultures. And you can find more information on that at nativeartsandcultures.org. We'll put that up there on the bar for you to see. A Swiss adventurer has completed a flight over the Grand Canyon in his custom-built jet suit. Uh, Yevs uh, uh, Rossi was airborne for more than eight minutes May 7th, soaring 200 feet above the canyon uh, rim on the uh, Wallapia Reservation. A planned May 6th flight before reporters was canceled after Rossi determined it would be too challenging without any practice runs. The Federal Aviation Administration had given Rossi the green light less than an hour before he was scheduled to take flight. Rossi's sponsor, Switch watchmaker uh, Brettling, announced a successful flight this week. Rossi's team says he flew at speeds of up to 190 miles an hour before deploying his parachute and landing on the canyon floor. The 51-year-old Rossi says the flight, which was his first in the U.S., is among the most memorable experience in his life. Federal agents and tribal police investigating an ultra-light aircraft incursion near Yuma, Arizona, recovered several bundles of marijuana and arrested a man on suspicion of trafficking in drugs. A Border Patrol spokesman tells the Yuma Sun that agents were notified last Friday that an ultra-light possibly loaded with drugs had flown over the border into Arizona. Using a helicopter, agents later located 10 bundles of marijuana. The Border Patrol thinks the ultralight probably drum, uh, dumped its drugs, uh, drug load and then returned to Mexico. Agents later arrested a man parked near the scene. A search of the man's house revealed eight more bundles of marijuana. In all, the government says about 500 pounds of marijuana was recovered with an estimated street value of nearly $270,000. Blackfeet tribal officials want to make sure the tribe's indoor smoking ban is enforced at a tribally owned casino. The Great Falls Tribune reports that the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council voted 5 to 4 this Monday to ban smoking in the Glacier Peaks Casino. The Blackfeet Tobacco Free Act of 2005 banned smoking in enclosed public places. Their casinos were exempted until September of 2007. However, a local tobacco initiative group told the council recently Recently, that the ban wasn't being enforced at the casino. Tribal Chairman Willie A. Sharp Jr. wrote to casino managers reminding them of the tribal regulations. Casino representatives responded with a proposal that a third of the casino be smoke free instead, but that proposal was voted down. Sharp says the health hazards of secondhand smoke are at the root of the council's decision. And tomorrow we hope to be bringing you some interviews off of the Water Walk, which is on the road where people continue to walk their buckets of salt water for a meeting in northern Wisconsin the second week of June on the Bad River Ojibwe, Ojibwe Reservation. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Thank you for joining with us and come back again soon.